downtown Johannesburg, the richest city in Africa. A place built on gold and now surviving on the wits of its many millions of inhabitants. Ride a bike on these mean streets and you want it to make the right impression. It's all too easy to get lost in the crowd when you're on two wheels, but that's not a problem for the Triumph Rocket Roadster. No one is going to mess with the rocket. It's too big, too imposing, and way too cool to get lost in a crowd. If you want to make an impression, nothing counts like size, and the Rocket Roadster has got that in shovel loads. This really is a very big motorcycle. How big? Well, with a bit of fuel in it, like it is now, this beast tips the scales at 370 kilos. That's like twice as much as any 1,000cc superbike. I mean, with a rider on who's just a little bit porkier than I am, that's half a tonne it's going to weigh on two wheels. That's very, very heavy. What about other big numbers? Well, how about the rear tyre? That's a 240, which is bordering on the ridiculous, really. And the front, even that's a 150, which is as big as you find on the back of most normal street bikes. But if you want to talk big numbers, impressive figures, nothing does the job like this. The engine, 2.3 litres, it's the biggest standard production engine in the world. So, biggest engine in the world with only three cylinders, which means that each one of the three cylinders, believe it or not, is the same size as an entire GSX-R 750 engine. All of it put together, good for 150 horsepower, but more impressively than that, it makes 221 newton meters of torque. It's an engine that just keeps on giving. Doesn't so much as accelerators punch you in the spine and drop kick you down the road. It's very, very silly, but uh, it's the sort of silly you can't help having a laugh at, really. On the original rocket of 2004, you wouldn't have been grinning so much as grimacing. That first version really didn't like corners. Thankfully, the arrival of the Roadster is good news for the handling. It's now genuinely quite capable, given that it weighs about as much as Ellis Park. Triumph may only have fiddled just a little bit with the handling, engine and riding position, but it has made a significant difference in the real world. It is way, way better than I remember that first rocket. In fact, the Rocket Roadster is so docile, so easy to ride, you really could use it as an everyday bike. With all the heavy black, with the hints of chrome and a general cruiser shape, this is one British bike that's been heavily influenced by a particular market. That market is the USA, where over one third of all rockets so far made have been sold. So, this Roadster, with its little touches of Americana, will probably go down a storm over there. But here in South Africa, I'm not quite so sure. We'll just have to wait and see. Triumph are definitely on something of a roll at the moment. It doesn't matter what new model they produce, it just seems to go straight to the top of the class. And actually, today, they're unveiling yet another new model. I have a feeling I know what it is, but I'm going to go out to the, the first ever South African annual Triumph Day and check it out. And while I'm there, it'll give me a bit of an opportunity to get a feel for exactly what sort of people make up your average Triumph owner. Because I could see myself being exactly one of those blokes. It may seem strange that this is the first ever official Triumph Day in South Africa, but it's worth remembering that in the grand scheme of things, the British manufacturer is still something of a niche player. And, despite all the history, this revived Triumph company has only been back in business for just over two decades. Since the 450 tickets sold out early in the day, we can safely assume that this will become a welcome event for South Africa's loyal Triumph fans. Every model in the current lineup could be found in the car park, including several beautiful older machines that definitely don't come with a service plan or roadside assistance. The big news for the day, though, was the unveiling of an important new model. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the South African Steve McQueen Bonneville. The Steve McQueen replica is an interesting new model, all right, but isn't really the one we were hoping for. Is this perhaps what you were waiting for? The new 1200 Explorer certainly impressed the loyal Triumph fans, but then it would, wouldn't it? It just suits me. They smooth. It's English. It's a well-known brand in the in the market. Special flair, special something special that you can't describe. Nottingham Forest is a great team. <laughs> awesome bike. You can't compare it. Yeah. I just love my Triumph. It Very suits nice. me perfect. It's not common. I've just always ridden Triumph. Well, I bought a Triumph because I had a look at it on the internet and then I crashed it and I just bought the same one straight away. <laughs> I, and I love the shape, I love the style. For me, it's that it's a premium brand. Basically, I think tradition. Of course, it's unique. Heritage. Because I'm English. Without a doubt. Not at all, no. He's contemplating it? I've ordered one. Yes, of course. Yes, it's a bike I would actually buy. 800 is better. It's a, a bit too high for me. I've got hip problems, you know. I'm a bit short, but I'm surely going to find myself a boyfriend that rides it. <laughs> Definitely. What is the Explorer? No, because of my, my height. Yes, it's, uh, it's a bit of everything. Uh, unfortunately not. I'm a bit too young for it. Certainly, as a general commuter, off-road, touring, can't beat it. Can't beat it, eh? Well, we'll be the judge of that when we test it on a future episode of The Bike Show.